Today, we're taking over the career of Robin Van Persie's son and taking him to the top of world football and maybe one day do what his father couldn't and take home a Ballon d'Or. The Flying Dutchman, ex-Manchester United and Arsenal legend has passed on his superior goal-scoring genetics to the next generation and next in line to continue the Van Persie name, it's Shaq. I'm not kidding, Shaquille Van Persie is currently in Feyenoord's Youth Academy, playing on a weekly basis in their under-17s team exactly where his dad started his career in the late 90s with the kid faithfully following in the footsteps it's just an added bonus that RVP is the manager of the youth academy team it's a family affair here in Rotterdam and this video does not stop until Shaquille is better than his father's 91 rated prime icon card so let the games begin our only prerogative is to get Van Persie Jr. starting for the Dutch outfit and here is how he looks he has that special something he's only 15 years of age and he can pretty much play anywhere in the forward line with his chiseled jaw and all. We're starting from the bottom with a rating of 54. He's left footed just like his father, 5 foot 10, weighing at 147 pounds. Of course, it had to be his best attribute, heading accuracy out of 70. I thought, why not? We also might as well give him a few traits to throw in the mix like finesse shot, flair, speed dribbler and team player. Come on, he's a Van Persie now. Having a good finesse shot is literally in his DNA. To get him up to scratch, low low work rates, 2 star skill moves, 2 star weak foot. We're applying the centre forward on a Bombardier train plan, the deep line forward. I'm probably open to sending him out on loan for a year or two just to get some game time under his belt. The teenager has time on his side and here is what the first team would look like if he was actually involved. Taking over that starting striker spot in the 4-3-3. Let's see if this kid can lead Leo Ranje and the Dutch to world domination. We'll take things day by day, baby steps people. We've already done one with Rude Hullet and his son. Now it's time for another Dutch icon to enter the ringer. Mini Van Persie, show me what you got. After Van Persie's rejected multiple loan deals to the lower leagues in England. It looks likely that he's got a two-year trip to Norway on the cards. This deal is going down so late this summer that he's had time to make two appearances in the Eredivisie and bag himself a goal. A major milestone for RVP's son, but now it is time for him to depart Feyenoord for the time being. He's off to the likes of where Erling Haaland and Martin Odegaard got their starts. He's shipped out to Alessons FK on a two-year loan deal. Two years of regular first-team football it's going to do wonders for his confidence. Look at that orange kit. It's given Dutch vibes already. As he'll be lining up in a 4-3-3 false nine formation that utilizes his center forward specialties. And his instructions for the rest of his career at center forward is going to be stay central support runs, false nine attacking runs, normal interceptions, and just stay forward. We don't want him defending whatsoever. Thanks to the Norwegian footballing calendar not being in sync with the rest of Europe, Van Persie joined like halfway through the season. He only managed a handful of appearances and his first run out for the Norwegian outfit ended with a plus one. He's now at a 56, hit 16 years of age. He's unhappy with the team performance. They're not doing too hot on the charts, but 14 appearances and he's taken my breath away, making the most of that game time with seven goals and two assists, nine goal contributions, which eventuated in a 7.07 average match rating. The Bombardier development plan, which is going to keep it on him for the next season of his loan, has his market value has now raised to 45k. After his two-year loan spell is up here in Norway. He'll return back to Feyenoord halfway through their season three, where he's only technically spent one and a half seasons here. I know, it's hard to keep track of, but I hope you're following the drift. Now, technically, it's the end of season two here in Norway, but halfway through season two at Feyenoord, he ended up improving Alisson's ranking upon last year, still to the Lords, the lower depths of the table. And even though they won't be fighting for a silver cylinder in the Norwegian Cup, he can keep his head up high knowing that he was a main contributor in this squad. And the lower is now 17. He's managed a plus 5 improvement, now standing at a 62 rating. And Big Shaq is doing his old man proud. He can score them in the Netherlands. He can score them in Norway. With 29 appearances, he was actually the club top goal scorer with 4 assists, the teenager. A gradual improvement upon last season's outing with an average match rating of 6.79, 16 goal contributions. And now he has successfully earned that high attacking work rate with Bombardia. His financial market value has improved 122%. Although we don't officially lose him until seven months time. Yeah, false alarm, he got eight games into the next Norwegian season, but he's packing his bags. He'll be returning home to Feyenoord, and he also managed to get himself a cheeky four goals and one assist on his way out. Five goal contributions, nine games, he's showing some promising signs. It feels like he's been gone for a while, but he's returned to his hometown club, and whilst he was gone, they failed to secure any form of silverware or European football, so Shaq is going to have to only focus on domestic football 
four come season three. Now the youngsters completed his Norwegian side quest and now you know what we're gonna whoa actually hold on okay we've just transitioned into this new season and all of a sudden he's come back as a 73 overall from the loan spell and majestically now has potential to be special what did he consume on the plane ride over what has RVP been feeding him it feels like I've just entered in a cheat code all of a sudden but I still am open for a loan move away just for him to hone his craft in a different league or even in the out of easy as his training development schedule this season will be that of the penetrator you know what playmaker forward is more my vibe right now with passing and dribbling both being in the mud those categories and attributes need the most work did we just discover a loan deal glitch as we have more suitors for a potential loan and it's Monza out of Serie A instead of a two-year deal though I'm gonna negotiate for one as his market value has now skyrocketed to 22.5 million pounds this summer all of a sudden the lads the talk of the town the destination is Italia he's up against some of the most hardwired tactical masterclasses of defense in all of Europe as he's a key jewel in the crown of this three-piece attack in a very pragmatic 3-4-3 formation at Monza I've actually just realized we've taken a little bit of an L as they've been relegated to Serie B there was a little bit of bait and switch involved there I saw the Serie A logos on the jersey and I thought we were clear Monza's new number 30 is looking to revolutionize the squad well they weren't quite champions but Van Persie's Monza have earned promotion to the top flight he won't be here for their Serie A campaign but what a monumental season 84 points also managed a round three exit in the Coppa Italia losing out eliminated to Sassuolo 2-1 they avoid the playoffs and in the regular season Van Persie has earned the capo canoniere for Serie B top goal scorer 21 goals in 37 matches he was an absolute sharpshooter in the second tier and he's grown even further of course now at a 78 it's a plus five just like season one he's just built different at 18 now I think he is top flight ready Dutch football is calling his name with an average match rating of eight on the dot in all competitions he scored 22 goals and two assists it's his best performance best production to date with that playmaker forward training on though I thought he would bag a few more assists but he was just focused on finding the back of the net no maxed out attributes to boast about as of yet but those dark greens are starting to creep in now with a market value of 37 million pounds on the dot forget the F1 Monza this city has now become Van Persie's second home his own little personal stomping ground but it's time to say goodbye it'll be one hell of a mountain to climb to crack into this fine old first team considering Jimenez's performances at benching all the other available strikers it's gonna take something special for Shaq to earn his throne we've just got to throw Shaq in up top in that two striker system working with Jimenez in partnership that combo just has goals written all over it we've also brushed him up and given him a brand new look some new boots and a bit of boxing tape on the right hand to give him that Jamie Vardy aesthetic he just looks tough ready for business ready for war as his training regime this season will be that of the penetrator he's earned his five star weak foot now it's time to attain that five star skill moves he's going to be slick on and off the ball after three years finally gets his first full run out in the era of easy big Jack has only done what his father could not in his playing days and has won the era of easy Robin Van Persie only won the Dutch Cup and the Dutch Super Cup with Feyenoord not the league and they've done so in Arsenal Invincibles fashion 90 points no losses and also taken home the Dutch Cup the Orange Becker in a derby win on penalties 4-3 against Ajax that's even more impressive now knowing that they did have European football with the Conference League topping group F Van Persie Jr. came out on top and won against Basaksha here in the round of 16 absolutely destroyed FC Midtjylland 7-1 on aggregate and then eventually got eliminated to Valencia they were one step away from a European final 5-3 on aggregate nevertheless two trophies a semi-final European run that is an astonishing campaign for the young Van Persie now back at his hometown club he got the experience he got the game time abroad and just ignore that plus 21 we've had technical difficulties recently with FIFA go check out the end of the Wrexham Youth Academy rebuild if you want to be filled in on that we low-key just had to restart and sort a few things out behind the scenes but everything has stayed the same he's improved a plus three in the Netherlands now at 19 at an 82 rating oh god don't you just love this glitch there we have it the stats on your screen right now and he was the top goal scorer at the club unable to take home the golden boot unfortunately by two goals losing out to vermin the number nine's other goals came through other competitions like the conference league and three assists meaning 36 goal contributions and an average match rating of 7.59 he is playing he's producing like a seasoned veteran at the moment is the fourth most valuable player at fire with a 57 million pound price tag after that sublime season he's just 
had unfortunately he hasn't been caught up to the Dutch national team for the 2026 World Cup. The teenager will be watching from the couch at home as the strike partnership of Marlon and Brian Brobby is the chosen two. Fingers crossed for the 2028 Euros he can get his national team call up. As they finished top of group H with Argentina 9 points. They then met their fate early on in the round of 16 eliminated to Croatia 2-1 and did they go on to rue the mistake of not calling up Shaq. Now that they're all back from the international business we're going to continue with the career sim and take over and I think it's time now we're going to add him to the transfer list and see what big European clubs show their interest. Leicester City have hit us up hello the Foxes have come through and bidded 87.8 million pounds for Shaquille Van Persie and the centre forward could have a brand new home at the King Power Stadium I'm just going to make sure that they're actually in the Premier League not the Championship though we'll accept it. I'll give that the green light as I think that's the perfect next stomping ground following in the footsteps of his dad. It's not quite the Gunners, but it's the top flight in England, and whilst he was in pre-season, he actually did manage to grow a plus one. It was fun while it lasted, you know. He was here for a good time, not a long time, through the Youth Academy, promoted from the under-17 squad into the senior team, loaned out, and now he makes his first big money move, a permanent transfer to England. The Premier League has come calling. He's now signed on the dotted line, ready for a new adventure, a new club, a new culture. Let's hope he can live up to the legacy and fill in the boots of the retired Jamie Vardy and overall just become an elite baller in England as he now has potential to be special again. Who knew that one transfer move could just change everything? He's landed in the Midlands just before season 5 has been launched and to be honest this Leicester squad is severely underrated. They could push for a top 4 finish you know. They don't really operate with a centre forward so we're going to have Pats and Dacker up top and shift Van Persie out on the left considering he can't be deployed at a left wing. Unfortunately he's copped in a minus 4 downgrade. We won't convert him to a left winger. We won't put him on balance. We'll just leave it as that. He's been gifted the Leicester City number 9, so a lot of expectation, a lot of pressure being placed on his shoulders. Let's see how he gets on with life here in the Prem. Leicester have been slick with it. It's been season 5, his fourth club, and he has helped them to a top 8 finish, top half of the Prem. And with 54 points, they've been rather inconsistent, but still in that conversation, fighting for European finishes. Chelsea win the league with 87 points. It was only domestic football Van Persie had to focus on as they didn't make it that far in the FA Cup. Losing out in round 3 to Bristol City 2-1. It was elimination in the Carabao as Brentford knocked them out 2-1 in round 3. I'm pretty sure that's no European football. Maybe it's a conference league spot. He's unhappy with the team performance, his own performance and his current contract which we might have to sort out. He still has potential to be special. He's 20 and upgraded a plus 4 now standing at 87. His production this season in 40 appearances he managed to get 14 goals and 8 assists. Not the 33 goal high of Feyenoord. Just hear me out. 22 goal contributions in your first ever Premier League stint with an average match rating of 6.89. It's nothing to be scoffed at. You gotta give him a bit of a buffer period. An adjustment time for him to get used to everything as he's still in good form and now has a transfer market value of 97.5 mil. Now the most valuable asset here at the King Power Stadium. We have to hook a brother up with a brand new contract now that he has improved over the off season. He's improved the plus one as we've transitioned over. Now we are sorting out the deal 190k a week, a crucial first team role, a four year deal. He is part of the long term future. Now he is very happy with his situation. He's got all the tools at his disposal to become a top bowler. You know what, Bombardia, we might have to get that sprint speed and acceleration maxed out. I'm also attempted to switch him back to balance so that we can improve both agility and balance in the dribbling category because there is no possible development plan that works on them besides pressing forward and I don't want him to have a high defensive work rate. He's edging ever closer to his dad's 91 rated icon card and he hasn't even turned 21 yet so bring on season 6. From 8th to 5th the Foxes jumped up 3 places and just missed out on qualifying for the champions. They bowled 1 point. They missed out on the top 4 as Manchester United win the league on the final day. A much improved season for Leicester as again they only had domestic football to focus on and it's his father's former club Arsenal winning the FA Cup 3-2 against Middlesbrough. Meanwhile Shaquille's club were knocked out 5-4 against the eventual champions on penalties. And over in the Carabao Cup, it was a Manchester derby to decide things. And Van Persie Jr. was eliminated to Southampton 2-0 in round 3. He's got to that corner level now where he just needs to be playing Champions League football. He's that kind of world-class baller. And he is the best overall player at the club. Now the Dutchman with a 90 overall. A cheeky little plus 2 upgrade. And he is now one of the world's best. With these performances in England, earn him a spot in the Euro 20. 2028 squad for the
the Netherlands in 43 appearances, he scored 25 goals and 16 assists. A massive improvement upon his first outing at Leicester and now he is the top goalscorer at the club with an average match rating of 7.6. Assisting where he could with 41 goal contributions, absolutely insane. The Bombardier development plan did him a world of good and got him his first maxed out attribute with 99 sprint speed and a couple of others have popped up like shot power and heading accuracy, I'm sure RVP would be proud as he's trying to replicate the Flying Dutchman's game in the modern era. However, agility, balance and strength are my main concerns and weaknesses about his game as his market value has now creeped up 22% standing at 137.5 million pounds. We could have clubs from all over the world circling to acquire his services as he's been called up to the national team. Shaq will be representing Le Orange for the first time in his professional career. Unfortunately though, he doesn't make the starting 11 and will be coming off the bench as a super sub. Euro 2028 has gone down with the Netherlands topping Group D. They scored 10 goals with 9 points against Norway, Scotland and Croatia finishing bottom and over in the quarterfinals they won out edged past France 1-0. Le Orange secured the semi-final spot and beat their neighbouring country Belgium 2-1 to secure a place in the final against 2016 champs Portugal. Van Persie hasn't been messing around. We've taken over the Netherlands. I want to play with him in game and with this 5 star cracked Dutch outfit. An increasingly elite golden generation. Shaquille will be the captain in up front with Brian Brobby leading the line. That's how Portugal are lining up. Those are the two team sheets going head to head. But Van Persie's first taste of international glory. He's doing something his dad did in 2010 leading his country out to a major final. They won the Euros back in the 80s with Hullet in the gang. So let's see if history can repeat itself and he can gear up for the 2030 World Cup. I don't know why no one's actually entering the pitch. What, what is going on in these cutscenes? Like nothing is happening. Um, Something seems off tonight. FIFA, hello? Okay, there we go. We're up and running. We've got everyone on the field as Shaquille will kick us off. In and around their attacking area in the box and it's a quick little finish there outside of the foot. Defensive intervention of the ages as Chavi Simmons over to Van Persie. Ball over the top. It's a perfect counter attack with Brian Brobby who gets the keeper out and it's a big hand from Diogo Costa. It's a big challenge from De Ligt, but the ball bubbles back into his path and Bilio denies Portugal of getting the opener. Crossing on the byline. He finds Conceição and it's Rafael Leal. We're trying to find Van Persie on the inside. Xavi Simmons now has a lot of space to work with here. A lot of green grass for Van Persie to try and find an outlet. It's Brian Brobby who just skies that chance over the bar. Tried to wait for him but opts for Maya in the back line who can square it across. It's Van Persie shot straight at the legs. Over here to Gakpo that might be changing. As Gakpo cuts inside, he finds another option. It's Xavi Simmons who gets taken down. It was going to be a penalty, but the ball went straight to Shaquille Van Persie who hits it for six. And it's the first major opportunity for the Netherlands. And they took it with both hands. It then rolled to the grateful Van Persie Jr. It was his strongest left foot finish with his sixth goal in just as many games in the 56th minute. That might be the most important one of his career so far. Up until this point, and it's at the hour mark. Rafael Leal cuts it back and Portugal get the equaliser straight away off kickoff. They aren't wasting any time. And Goncalo Ramos gets his country back into this fixture. 1-1 one, one again and our defence has opened up all the way and it's hit the crossbar, hit the other side of the post and how Portugal haven't taken the lead, no one will know. As Xavi Simmons tries to find the ball out to Van Persie, I don't think he's offside. He's got Gakpo in the middle here, but he might go his own, you know. The number nine with a great finesse shot. Diogo Costa denies him. Oh no, João Felix has completely done our defense. And it's the 78th minute. Portugal take the lead with 12 minutes left to play. It's that man again, number 88, Goncalo Ramos. He's flipped the switch and they've turned it on. We might be in a little bit of trouble. That's the big money moment. And Van Persie with his 99 pace can just run through the entire Portuguese defense. Can he get a shot away? And of course he does. That's the 87th minute equal. He is absolutely rapid. Unlike his father, he's small, he's quick, he's agile. And the orange pocket rocket, their trusty number nine, nets his seventh of the tournament. Again, in that exact same top right hand corner. And he's given it the big and Shaquille with a Euros final double. He was made, he was built for opportunities like this. The big games where it all comes down. It's the Van Persie and Ramos show. And now he cuts it back. Van Persie's inside all alone. Gravenberch sees him. Van Persie for the hat trick. And it goes whiskers wide of the post with Maya, the left back. 
and Van Persie to provide a perfect cross inside. And how has Diogo Costa denied us there? Portugal with one last attack. We've got one minute of added time. Can our defense hold up? He's not offside. Nuno Mendes rolling into our box. And they're going to find Rafael Leao. And Bilio single-handedly with all of his saves sent us to penalties. Unless Portugal have one last trick up in their sleeve. We have to clear this one. Header it down. Header it away. Get it out of the box. Whatever you have to do, get clear. What is going on? Are you serious? right now. How is that not a foul? Diogo Jota, in the most cruel, heartbreaking way, has broken Netherlands hearts and the spirits. Diogo Costa's running around like they have just won the lottery. Why did Bilio dive for no reason? After all those saves, he did all the hard work. All he needed to do was stay central and pick the ball up, but no, he went for a dive, and he has costed the Netherlands a European title. That's Diogo Costa's first goal of the tournament, too. You gotta be joking. You gotta be kidding me the curse of the commentator strikes again after a Van Persie double it wasn't enough to get his country the silverware they won't be European champions but boy they gotta hold their heads up high for the World Cup of 2030 we can't let that demoralize them he's got to use this as motivation he's got to use it to get revenge and fuel him for world domination as Portugal just like in 2016 do the unthinkable do the unlikely and condemn the young King Van Persie to a runners-up medal it's enough to make any manager want to resign from the national team. His debut campaign for Leo Ranje, he managed seven goals including those two in the final, the two clutch goals and one assist with an average match rating of eight. And if he keeps this kind of form, this kind of goal scoring production up, he's going to be winning more than a Euros player of the tournament award. I'll tell you that for free. As the kid could potentially have outgrown Leicester, I was going to say he returns back in all his European glory, but that's going to have to be put on the back burner as we add him to the transfer list. We want him to explore his options and see if the grass will be greener on the other side. I don't know where Wolves are getting this kind of money from, but 189.2 million pounds is the fee they are willing to bid on Van Persie, and they aren't playing European football. They're not in the Champions League, so we'll be rejecting that one. It's taken us until opening day of the Premier League to finally land on a deal that we've actually been satisfied with, and it's RB Leipzig coming through here with a 204.8 million pound bid for Van Persie. The Germans, with all that Red Bull money, can afford him, as we also had Juventus come through here, slide in with Alexander Rice. Zach in a swap deal, plus 108.9 mil. It would be good to get some experience in the Bundesliga. RB Leipzig are usually really overpowered at this late stage of career mode, and their team could really use a goal-scoring threat as Van Persie managed to actually get a plus one in the offseason upon his return from international duty. There is no rest for the 21-year-old as he aims to reach the top, and we've got the deal finalised there. We've given it the green light. They're a club with lofty ambitions. They've got their stuff in order, and they're pursuing success in the Champions League. It's the perfect environment for Shaquille to thrive. It's a change of scenery, another league and country for Van Persie to thrive and conquer. And look at this squad he has joined into here with the likes of Nkunku, Correa, Torres, Valpato. This is their strongest starting 11. We've decided to deploy them in a 4-5-1 attack and formation. Very pragmatic. It's an evolutionary system with Van Persie being deployed formally as a centre forward, but he's kind of playing off the striker towards the left. He's had a new club, a new environment, a new number, and it's time for for an experiment. We're leaving his development plan on balance so that it can equally work on everything across the board. He's pretty much already equal to his dad at only 21 years of age. It's kind of crazy, really. It's the kid's first league title since the Eredivisie. He has come through in the Bundesliga and wiped away the competition. Van Persie is now a German champion. Him alongside the Leipzig supporting cast win it with 66 points. It's fine margins, baby. One point. It could have gone down to three clubs at the end of the day, but that's how they did it in style as Bayern finishing fifth. We also have a DFB Pokal final, which I'm going to watch play out against fourth place Union Berlin. Let's see if they can get the job done in Berlin. And there you go. It was 3-3. They win it out on penalties. Van Persie converted his penalty. He actually didn't score in regulation time, but the flying Dutchman is flying and has managed to capture the German double. I'd say that's a successful first season here at Leipzig. He is adding silverware upon silverware to his trophy cabinet. And how how much he actually contributed, we're yet to find out, as he hasn't grown whatsoever on that balanced development plan. We might have to switch things up come season eight. It's not a World Cup year, it's not a Euros year. He's decided to go all in on his club football. And he's managed to find the back of the net 23 times, 46 appearances, 23 goals and eight assists. It's not double figures in both departments, but with an average match rating of 7.43. That's 31 goal contributions in a team full of superstars. No new 99 attributes to report on as his agility and 
and balance still worry me. We're gonna let the center forward do what he has to do at 22. He has now attained a price tag of 135 million pounds on the dot. We might have to keep this offer in the back of our minds for season nine as PSG have come through with a bid of 163.5 million for Shaquille. I would love to accept it and head to the city of love, but I think we're just not ready for it yet. We've constructed a solid squad here at RB Leipzig and I wanna go all in, changing up his routine as we've shifted him back on the penetrator development plan, still keeping him as a center forward. I'm really considering converting him to a striker, but we'll just leave it for now as Leipzig's number 11 is going to be all guns are blazing for his second stint at the club. There you have it, Shaquille and the boys have successfully defended their Bundesliga title and have gone back to back German champions with 79 points, beating out Bayern to the two horse race title and they also took down Bayern in the big dance, the German Cup final and hold the phone, actually it's a German treble, 3-0 the Super Cup. Yeah, SVP has officially conquered all of Germany and I can't believe I accidentally didn't show you guys last year's Champions League as they were knocked out in the round of 16. This time, Van Persie has made it all the way through to the big dance. 2030's Champions League final, it's Leipzig versus Chelsea as they finish top of the group undefeated. They then destroyed Ajax 7-3 on aggregate, breeze past Juventus 3-1 and then booked their tickets into the final. A potential quadruple is on the line here. This is what's at stake. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think a German team or just a team in general have won the quadruple and a proper quadruple. Here's how they're lining up. We are going to quick sim this one and watch it play out. What's going to prevail? The Red Bull money or the Todd Bowley takeover? Let's find out as we're here in a World Cup year for Van Persie to seal his fate. And it's another absolute stinker in a final. He has lost the Champions League. He didn't score in regulation time and went to extra time and penalties and he actually was a factor of them losing, missing his penalty. Heartbreak at the final hurdle with a 4-3 loss on penalties. He has the chance to redeem himself and right the wrongs this summer as he's been called up to the Dutch national team. Not taking any breaks, but we'll take a look and see what he was able to produce this season. Was able to grow plus one, now surpassing his father's icon card with a 92. With 53 appearances, he managed to score 26 goals and six assists, outscored by Pedro Goncalves, his Portuguese teammate who he's looking to get revenge on for 2028. 32 goal contributions. The Dutchman was ever so close to making history and writing his name in the record books with a quadruple. They're a club in financial ruin after team are out of contract. Might be time to hit the eject button and get the hell out of here. As the Netherlands have been drawn into Group F alongside Poland, Mexico and Austria. So a very winnable group. You'd think Leo Ranje would have no problems. And the Van Persie led Dutch have been guided to a yet another major final. This time it's the World Cup final between them and Argentina. Bit of bad blood in this fixture. What was the road like to the final? How'd they get there? They topped Group F with six points and actually lost the group stage game. They ended up being paired against Ghana, winning 3-1 against the Africans, taking down the penalty specialist Germany on penalties, giving them a taste of their own medicine, and then with a narrow 2-1 victory over fellow neighboring country Belgium. It has all added to this moment with this exciting Dutch outfit, 90 attack, 88 midfield, 87 defense, a five-star footballing nation with their total football. I'm going to watch this one play out. Hell, even jump in if they need some help. Both team sheets and players in their prime. We can't let the Netherlands lose yet another World Cup final, just like in 2010. So get the popcorn out, lads. This one's going to be interesting. Here we go, Van Persie. Finds the ball into Xavi Simmons. Ball over the top to Gakpo. Argentina are through, and they found the breakthrough with Yod Foyt. 1-0 to the South Americans. We've got a mountain to climb. Here we go. Chance for the equalizer. Just take the shot, mate. Van Persie was right there. Oh, my God. Another save. Are you kidding me? We're going to halftime. You know what? I'm just going to jump in here. They're all over the place. Had so many opportunities, but just couldn't convert. And now we're taking over, baby. A defense opened up like the Red Sea, but what a tackle. Game-saving tackle there as Gakpo used uses his pace to get ahead of the defenders and it's Van Persie inside of him he does the team thing and Van Persie should get the ball out the back of the net but he wants to celebrate now not only scoring in a World Cup final but the Euros 2028 final where he bagged a brace and he could be on for another big second half here and all Shaquille had to do was power it into the bottom corner and get the Dutch their equaliser our counter attack game is currently on point but our defence needs to withstand this Argentinian attack and what a save from Bilio Frimpong's giving the ball away in a dangerous 
this area. Luca Romero fresh off the bench. He's the super sub. Timber won the ball back and Bilio. And there you have it. These lads love to do it the hard way. Van Persie's side going into extra time again. Raven Birch now finds Chavi Simmons who sees Van Persie in a whole bunch of space. No one's marking him. Why did he go with his weak foot? Now on the edge of the area with Frankie Dion. Van Persie wants to have a go at it again. And it's a weak foot power drive into the bottom right hand corner. The number 11. He can score on both feet with that five star weak foot. He capitalizes off the deflection and fires an absolute grass cutter into the bottom right hand corner. And could that be the moment of redemption for his nation? It's Leo Ranje's goal scorer and hero like father like son. And in the 100th minute he claimed his sixth goal of this World Cup tournament and potentially winning his country their first ever world title. And look at that. Look at the work rate. Look at this dedication from the Dutch as Gakpo with the ball over the top could set up Van Persie for a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's going to go with that left foot finesse shot and it's his bread and butter. It's his specialty. With the finesse shot trait, he fires it into the bottom left-hand corner and he's captaining his nation to the biggest prize in world football. And he's got goal scoring Dutch DNA in his veins. The number 11 on the volley finds the third and in the 119th minute, nips the game in the bud. He's had to endure a setback after the setback, losing the Euros 2028 final in a devastating fashion. It's a Van Persie hat-trick I forgot to touch on. The hat-trick hero single-handedly bringing these lads to be world champions. And there's the trophy in all its glory. He might have fumbled the bag in the Champions League final, but boy oh boy did he come through and deliver the goods here at the World Cup. His father was unable to do it. The likes of Iron Robin, Schneider, some legends of the Dutch game were unable to win the World Cup. Lost out to that famous Spain 2010 side. And 20 years later, about Five World Cups later, the Netherlands reign supreme over world football. Where do we even go from here? That's the big question. How do you top a season like that, nearly winning the quadruple, winning the world title with your nation, and just being an overall goated captain? He's cracked the system. He is a living legend right now, and we have placed him on the transfer list. We're looking at offers. We've got Wolves. We've got Frankfurt. Nothing really tickling my fancy. Look, he is him right now, and Van Persie can command this type of transfer some £200 million have been offered from Barcelona and I'm just gonna straight up accept he needs a big boy club that are gonna fit his demands be competitive for every single piece of silverware and also assist him in his Ballon d'Or conquest he's ticked off all the boxes in Germany winning all the trophies available besides the Champions League he's won a World Cup now he just needs that holy grail and golden board to add to his collection let's see if he can do it as he walks out of the Leipzig headquarters it's been a good two years but he confirms he's moved to Spain at the 200 million pounds on the dot. That's a W in my book because they also play with a center forward formation. They utilize his position with Joel Felix who we're going to bring slightly back and make sure that spot is a out and out center forward. He's a specialist at it and here is the full strength Barca starting 11 that he's working with. They are working with an incredibly thin squad but with a few additions and a few minor tweaks they could be competing for the big prizes. Well in 2030 a World Cup win wasn't enough to get Van Persie in the top four Ballon d'Or nominees. It's pretty much all the main foes of the Career Mode Ballon d'Or award ceremony. Haaland, Foden, Mbappe. And the winner is, of course, the inevitable Norwegian Viking. It's Erling Haaland now at a 94, 30 years of age, and he's still killing it. Shaq's going to have to have an impossible season, robot-like numbers, in order to compete with Haaland and Mbappe at this rate. We're nine years deep into Shaquille's career takeover, and he's just proven yet again that he's a serial winner. 96 points accumulated with Barca winning the league with ease, also asserting their dominance in the Super Cup by winning 4-2 against Real Madrid. And you guessed it, it is a domestic treble as they take home the Copa de España 3-2 against Atletico. Now this is where we have reached the pinnacle. It is another chance for him to win the quadruple this time against his former side RB Leipzig who he's just left to set up this dream clash for the ages. Irisau is setting up here are the two lineups with all of Barca's additions over the summer. Saliba, Martinez and Donnarumma at the back versus some familiar faces we are all aware of. Some former former friends and co-workers in that RB Leipzig team, but now tonight they become arch enemies as Van Persie has the final say, of course. Big Shaq in the final, turning up big with a 64th minute winner. It all went down in the second half and the Catalans win out 2-1. He's a Spanish treble winner, a quadruple winner, a European champion and a world champion with his nation. Now surely that will condemn him to a top four Ballon d'Or nomination. He is an absolute freak of nature. Not even his father could reach these dazzling heights as we release Wolf Felix 
so he became the only centre forward, the only striker at the club, and would you look at that, it paid out in dividends with 36 goals and 6 assists to his name. His 42 goal contributions in 59 appearances, he pretty much played every single minute. He had him set on the penetrator development plan, which has also got him that 99 stamina. 99 long shots has also come into the fray with his dark green attributes being the main strengths of his game. And I don't know who sorted out this contract, but he now has a 416.5 million pound release clause. I don't think I've seen a fee higher. And his transfer market values trending upwards of 13%. Reaching that decade milestone, we want the Ballon d'Or at all costs. And I've never actually seen this. Four competitions won, four trophies in the cabinet. For Shaq to confirm his him status and overtake his father in the footballing world, he's got to go out and win this 2031 Ballon d'Or. He's up there with his fellow Barca teammates like Kvaratskhelia and Kulusevski. Zuzan Vlahovic also poses a threat, but surely the Dutchman has got this one in the bag. And I see Barcelona colours here, but I'm not quite sure who it goes to. And there we have it. You get the gist. Shaquille Van Persie has now been crowned the best player of the year in 2031. After a decade of football, a lot's been leading up to this moment, but the Dutchman has actually gone out and done it. Barca's number 11 already this season and scored himself 18 goals and 5 assists halfway through. And he'll go down as one of the best goal scorers in football history. Winning trophies, being successful wherever he went, and that's just the cherry on top. SVP, he is him. He is that guy in his Ballon d'Or campaign for season 10. He went invincible. 106 points with Barcelona. Winning La Liga and also taking home the Supercopa in a 3-2 win versus Real Madrid. And it was the Spanish treble again. Back to back. 2-0 against Los Blancos in an El Clasico battle. And the only trophy, unfortunately, they weren't able to win was the UEFA Super Cup in a 3-1 loss to Man United. But you can bet your bottom dollar they made up for it and won the quadruple. Van Percy guiding the Blaugrana to another Champions League success. 2-1 against Tottenham in the final. I mean, it's Tottenham. It's what you'd expect. It's happened again. But Tottenham is the history of the Tottenham. Just complete and utter domination all across the board. And I bet you're wondering what kind of stats, what kind of numbers did this kid put up? I mean, he is now 25, about to turn 26. He hasn't grown whatsoever, still maintaining his 94 rating. And in 60 appearances, he didn't get any injuries. He was also the top goal scorer with 40 goals and 11 assists. Double figures in both departments, outscoring Keluzewski by 7 goals with a record high average match rating of 8.28. He is simply unstoppable. The captain with 51 goal contributions, the penetrator. If you don't know, now you know. Shaquille Van Persie is one to look out for in the future. Could potentially be added to the next FIFA, so keep your eyes peeled. The golden ball centre forward pulled no punches in season 10 of his career, Sim, and rightfully so, he turned into an absolute menace. I think RVP is looking down, looking over him, being a proud dad, and I think his son might have a good case to why he should get his own icon card. Ballon d'Or check, Champions League check, World Cup check, and let me know down in the comments below, what are the father-son combinations should we add into FIFA 23? What other careers should we take over and wonder kids should we add into the game? Again, I read all the comments, I go through them all for suggestions. Who knows, maybe your comment could inspire the next video on the channel. If you've come this far, make sure to drop the video a like down below, hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on any videos coming to the channel. Follow me on all my socials, the links are down in the description and as always, I've been Sir BCHD. I'm gonna love you and leave you. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.